All right, so let's dive on into this. This is the purpose of content. This is why you create it. And from a 30,000 foot view, I just want to give an example here. Um, I, uh, I'll tell you why I started uh, the other show, Secret MLM Hacks Radio. This is one of the greatest hacks ever to getting a lot of noise very quickly into a, into a, a place. Um, go and look into the quality of the content that your market is consuming. So I went in, and when I first started realizing, I was like, okay, when I leave, what if I start selling one of these things in MLM or network marketing, right? What if I go into that space? And I had been testing stuff uh, for years, but I never had this thought. Um, what is the quality of the content in that space? And I went and I got into iTunes, and I started, I put in network marketing, I put in uh, MLM. Do that for your industry. Put in whatever your market is, and start to see what the top episodes and, and content and podcasts, go to YouTube, see what the top things are that pop up and start asking yourself, what's the quality of this content? And I started realizing that it was terrible. Okay, like three or four years ago, it was, it was, hopefully it doesn't offend anybody. It was all like how to mind trick somebody into your downline. And it like, it was all stuff like that, not actually any marketing tactic, right? And so I was like, well, this is a huge opportunity. Okay, terrible content in your marketplace is a major opportunity. Because what do we know about belief? It's upheld by story. And if that's the story they're consuming, I can change beliefs real easy. So that's what happened. So all these people who are in the square boxes now are my students who I went through and I taught how to do what you guys are about to go through. And we're in like, there's a ton of us in the top 50 of, of this category now. Not changing the industry, not just like changing the whole industry. And now huge, massive MLMs, I've been reaching out trying to figure out how we're doing what we are because we switched what they're consuming. That's why this is such a big deal. So start looking to see like, hey, what is the stuff in my market? What are they generally consuming? Who are the other industry, or who are the other um, influencers in my market? Are they publishing? Hopefully, if they're not, awesome. <laughs> you mean you have a huge pot of people, right? And, and no one's listening to many people? Like, I can't, I can't describe a better opportunity. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, this is huge, 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 massive back to the game. When I realized that, it, it helps a lot. Okay, now yesterday I spoke about how we want to be selling people, right, who only need a little bit of tap. Tap, 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 a room, right? That's all they need. <laughs> uh, happy Gilmore fans. <laughs> right, they only need just a little tap in order to be sold. But there's still great people that just aren't ready yet. What moves them closer to the sale Closer to being, you know, uh, in, into the, in the hole is uh, content, is belief, is them coming on over. That actually is what gets somebody. Remember, customer education is the key to a good dream customer. This is how you do that. And that's the other reason. Sh uh, content plays that role in, in my strategy. Um, uh, Frank Kern has a really, really great um, example he gives where he says, uh, I don't know if you guys saw this. He did it on Instagram also. He was sitting at a table and he took this big thing of mints. And he sat down at the table and he grabbed just a, a handful of mints and he set it on the table and he goes, this represents the people who are ready to buy from you in the next six weeks. Okay. Now, almost the biggest mistake people make is they only make their marketing for that group of people. And then he took a, two handfuls of mints, boom, these are all the people who are ready to buy from you in three months. And he took the rest of them and just dumped them. This is the people ready to buy from you in nine plus months or a year. Okay. And the issue is that as marketers, a lot of times, especially direct response marketers, because we're measuring so fast, we're only looking at that first group. What warms people up, like how many of you guys have listened to Sales Funnel Radio for like more than three months? That's a lot of hands. That's exactly what I'm talking about. So what I do is I'm talking to future customers. And that's the purpose. Of, and content doesn't die. It will be there after I'm dead, right? So it's always up there. It's always out. And this lets me go start talking to the next group and the next group and let people know like, hey, yeah, he's got massive eyeballs, but you know, he kind of knows what he's talking about in a few things, right? And starts to warm him up and get people closer to the hole. Does that make sense? That's the role it plays in the customer journey if they're not ready to buy from me. And if they're not, that's fine. I'm okay with that. Totally cool, I will be here. Yeah? Okay. So the purpose, the marketing purpose of publishing again is to educate your dream customer closer to the sale. I think it was, um, so is it Jay Abraham or Dan Kennedy that said, uh, Marketing is customer education, <coughs> something like that. Anyway, uh, the second reason is to learn how to create customers. Our goal is to collect customers, but eventually we need to learn to create them. This is how I test messaging to do that. All righty, so I'm gonna keep going. Um, anyone ever read this book? Such a good book. 
Oh man, very eye-opening. If you want to uh, never watch the news again, don't read this. <laughs> okay. Basically what he does is he goes and he teaches how news is created, created, <laughs> keyword, and how news is put together and he exposes how you can take advantage of that for marketing. It's really interesting. Um, and one of the biggest lessons I got from this, I don't think he exclusively said this, but while I, I was reading it, I was like, whoa. He says, whoever controls content controls belief, right? Industries, countries. Think of all the propaganda that was happening in World War II times by nation's leaders. And whole nations being led astray just because of the type of things they were being fed, right? And so as I started thinking this in terms of a market, the same applied, right? Whoever controls content controls a market, all right, if I can control what you're being fed, it's like, oh, this is very powerful stuff. Okay, so the content machine is, a, it's not just about me publishing all the time. It is about prepping a market, prepping all those future people that are not ready to buy yet and starting to warm people up that way. Okay, you will buy your customers somehow, either with time or money. And if you don't have time, be prepared to spend money. And if you don't have money, you've got to be willing to spend time. Okay, <clears throat> um, okay. oh, it continues to sell customers forever. Um, I'm always shocked to see how many episodes, downloads we're getting on stuff that was ever, you know, forever ago. And what's cool for, I'll just tell you this, a side note too. I spend a lot of time trying to make my episodes awesome. I forget what I say. <laughs> so how did I create this event right now? We went back to all the episodes about content and I re-listened all of them and I was like, that was some good crap. Oh my gosh, cool, 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 what? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's like a, a journal. That's what's fun about it. It, it helps you tremendously. <laughs> Um, in the future. So here are my four favorite traffic strategies overall, or tra traffic categories, I should say, and how they kind of work together. The first, um, and this isn't in any kind of order actually, but um, ads, love ads. Ads are awesome, they're immediate, like, very measurable. Dream 100, very cool, uh, takes some time, right? Uh, affiliates, affiliates are amazing. Um, I'll tell you though that an affiliate is usually highly needy compared to a Dream 100. Dream 100 is hard to get. Affiliate, they need a lot of hand-holding, which is why we pre-create so many emails for people to download. You know what I mean? When you log into the affiliate areas, like in ClickFunnels stuff, that's why we do it, because we know they won't do anything anyway. So we gotta get them as far down the path as we can. Last is content. And usually the revenue that I tip, this is me personally, this is what I see the revenue come from from each of these sources. Okay, I hand drew this on the iPad, it looks like crap. <laughs> okay, all right, so first, ads. I usually get great money from it pretty quickly, which is why I turned it on early on, but after a while, it, it really does get hard for me to scale. And in fact, as I start scaling the ads, Facebook usually starts freaking out, and I notice that there's this, this, this cap. You know, it's really hard to go beyond a certain amount of dollar spend on one platform. So Facebook, like we were putting a dollar in and getting 10 out on Secret MLM Hacks for a long time. And then it was dollar in and we were getting six and then five and then four and then got down to two. And I was like, oh, we gotta boost this. That's why we made the, do you guys like the chatbots for MLM video? <laughs> That's why I showed it so you guys could see a presentation, a webinar in six minutes. That thing does really good. It came in and every four purchasers of that, somebody bought Secret MLM Hacks. So we'd get $200, which is how much it costs us to buy a customer, $200 and one of them would come buy our $1,000 thing. And it just completely liquidated the ad cost almost, almost totally. Um, so but anyway, ads, awesome. Dream 100, nothing forever. And then bam, right? Lots of cash, pops lots of cash. This is a great strategy for that, but they usually take, take a little while to get going. You guys like the, that drawn skill? Mm. I did not graduate past stick figures. <laughs> All right, affiliates? Uh, affiliates are hard, man. They just, uh, usually you get uh, two or three affiliates that are awesome. Like we have probably, Colton, how many people ask to be an affiliate every week for us? It's probably, I don't know, 10. How many didn't do anything? Maybe one a month, right? That's it. But we give them all these tools. We give them affiliate outrage. Anyone went through affiliate outrage? We're thinking about charging for that because it was really good. <laughs> um, but uh, it's just, just the way it works. So anyway, um, that's why ClickFunnels spends so much time getting people to do the dream car thing and the promoting around. Like, it's a lot of, affiliate is its own job. It's actually the first job Colton was hired for when I hired him. Russell was like, what are you gonna go do, man? You're solo. I was like, I know, I need a team. He's like, can I give you a suggestion? Your first hire should be a revenue producing role. I was like, oh, sounds good. So he came in as the Dream 100 affiliate manager. 
and uh, to produce more uh, revenue. And he did, it was great. Next is content. And content, you will not see a return for a long time, okay? But it will be faster than you expect. About six months in, people started asking for my time to look at their funnel, or basically the market started telling me what it wanted me to sell it. <laughs> it's awesome, right? And then after a while, I don't know any other strategy that will supersede it. Just content, content, content. That's why Gary V spends so much on content, and Russell does. That's what I do now. It's like planting seeds, man. They just wait for them to germinate and grow. Uh, best buyers come from content. Um, anyone ever read the book um, Ready, Fire, Aim? Highly recommended as well. I didn't realize how many books I talk about. Um, there's nothing more important in marketing than media. Oh, I love that. Nothing more important in the actual act of marketing than media itself. You got to talk, got to be very, very loud. Um, I love this challenge that Russell gives. He says, if you've uh, published consistently for one year, come back and tell me if your financial problems are not gone. True, true statement, right? Who's, who's done that? Yeah, right? Crazy. It, it's like, it's almost creepy how well that works. I don't know why, but eventually, like, I don't know, by month six, like, stuff starts shifting, and people are like, oh, this person's consistent and real. This is crazy. You can take level two business skills, have level four content skills, it'll look like you have a level 10 business, okay? It, it doesn't make sense uh, how much it explodes you and puts you out there. Okay, so key takeaways just from this first part right here. You guys, educate your dream customer enough to want to buy later. That's one of the biggest reasons why we continue to publish over and over and over. My best buyers always come from content, and my challenge to you guys is just to publish for a year. Whatever that means to you, if it's daily, if it's weekly. Um, I usually find, if you've never done this before, that once a week is a great place to start and we'll stretch you. Okay. Um, make sense? Yeah. Questions at all? It's kind of the purpose of the content round one there. You guys good? Yeah. We're going to go into the show, how I do it, all those things. We'll listen to my intros so you guys can hear what I'm doing in them. Uh, they're very strategic. That's uh, the purpose, as a marketer, why I publish. Was that helpful though? Yeah. I had never really taught some of those things before and I wanted to know if it really was because when you look at it, like this is, this is the business. I am in the business of content. And by the way, I'll teach you how to make an offer, not the other way around. So that's why we're so into it. And uh, we are buying, we bought that office for the purpose of the studio, <laughs> right? And um, it's like 350 grand. That's really expensive for us to go build the studio we want to. But knowing the power of the content and why we do what we do, it is, a, it is a nothing compared to the power that it brings in. I want you guys to see that.